Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome. Today's topic is experimental designs for fitting response surfaces. Experimental designs for fitting response surfaces. So, the to contents of today's presentation are features for selecting response surface design, design for fitting first order model designs for fitting second order model under this we will discuss central composite design and box behenken design and there are some references primary source of chair material is chapter 11 of the book entitled design analysis of experiments by montgomery which is published by willy 8th edition so let us first look back little bit so when we talk about experimental design designs in the first few classes i have explained the names and then thereafter what happened we have elaborated all those designs and the experimental data based on those designs uh, needs need to be analyzed and the analysis schemes were also given to you for example, we have started with one factor randomized design, complete randomized design, then complete randomized design with blocking, then we have gone for two factor design, three factor multi factor design, then special class to the power k factorial design, then to the power k minus p fractional factorial design and so many things. So, um, thereafter we have started the in last lecture uh, we have started with response surface methodology response surface response surface methodology RSM response surface methodology and uh, I have explained the first order model first order model with with a design design called factorial design with central point factorial design with central center point so in to, today's lecture we will discuss those popular designs experimental designs which are used to fit response surfaces. So, that is why I have written that design for fitting response surfaces or experimental design for response surface methodology. We will, st we will start with the first factor model, first order model and then we will go for second order model, what are the different kinds of design are needed. So, if you look back the first order model what uh, first order response surface there we have used factorial design with center point these are the factorial points and this is center point and in co with coded term x 1 x 2 obviously with reference to two factors. So, there will be more factors then uh, it will be basically factorial uh, design with center points. So, at the factorial points usually one run each experiment is conducted, but at the center point several uh, experimental runs are conducted and it is a very important point because uh, at this point the data will give us to uh, estimate the MSE mean square, mean square error which is basically also a estimate of sigma square. Okay. So, 
we will go by this manner that first we will see that what are the features that is important for selecting response surface design. So, the design should provide a reasonable distribution of data points throughout the region of interest. So, there is the operating region, operating zone of interest or re region of interest for the behavior of Y, which is response variable and which is known to the process engineer or the experts. So, you your design should give valuable information uh, on the behavior of the response at the at, at any point on the design surface or design space. So, design allows model adequacy including lack of fit to be investigated. So, that means, the data what you collect that must represent the population and must be sufficient in size. So, that the adequacy of the model used for analyzing the data will be found out and also at the same time the lack of fit. I think if you can recall the uh, regression uh, lectures where we have described lack of fit. So, lack of fit also to be estimated. Then the design would be such that it allows experiments to be performed in blocks very important because you know randomization blocking and replications are the th three basic principles and designs uh, the any experiments they are dependent on useful resources including raw materials. So, you require to do either intentionally blocking or you are forced to do blocking, but blocking is an important one and your design should should allow you to do this. Design of higher order to be built up sequentially that is what we have discussed in 2 to the power um, k factorial 2 to the power k minus p fractional factorial design. So, that means, you 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 design should be sequential. So, that the, the, the higher the order of interactions if you require to estimate those orders of interactions it can be estimated. The design provides an internal estimate of error. So, this is that a part of a, this is basically the error part. So, estimation error is very very important it is it is basically that uh, between between levels within levels all kinds of errors must be estimated. Provides precise estimate of the model co coefficients. So, what does it mean? the beta value regression coefficient or the effect in ANOVA you use this should be this should be estimated in such a manner that the variance of those estimates should be the minimum. So, that means, the your design should allow you to avail the minimum variance estimates. Design should provide a good profile of the prediction variance throughout the experimental region. So, when you pray using the uh, analysis of the model you employ for analyzing the experimental data that model ultimately will give you the response surface kind of thing and you want to predict a regress you will get regression model you want to predict the output or response value. Now, the out the predicted variable value uh, that must must be within having uh, the variance part that also should be should be at the minimum level. So, what do you want that the 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 uh, data what you get out of the designed experiments it will allow you to have or develop a good profile of the prediction variance and obviously, throughout the experimental region or design space. Design provides uh, reasonable robustness against outliers or missing values. This is another important uh, feature because many a times what happened uh, you may may encounter outliers or some assignable reasons which causes your experimental runs to be uh, to, uh, to to be skewed to certain direction or you may um, may me 
miss some values to record properly under such situation the missing data handling and outlier removal all those things is required and at the same time your if, even if all those things are done the out, outcome of this will be so robust that uh, you can use the experimental data for the objectives for which the, the design was done. So, design does not require a large number of runs, large number of runs means costly. So, it should be it should be the minimum possible runs obviously, representative one. So, that sample size determination we have I think three like two two lectures on sample size determination. So, you have seen that how the sample size is determined. So, what you want your your sample size should be representative, but at the same time it should not be so high that it will it will uh, there will be cost overrun. Design does not require too many levels of the independent variables. Suppose you have five five factors and if each factors having five levels each. So, there will be 5 into 5 25 treatment combinations. So, this is probably a uh, little exhaustive we do not want such uh, high level of um, levels uh, or so many treatment combinations with minimum levels the hot maximum information that can be achieved. So, that should be we got from the uh, that uh, we must get from the uh, design you employ. Design ensures simplicity of calculation of the model parameters. For example, you will be able to use ANOVA because ANOVA is a very simple one, easy to understand, very powerful, effective. So, it should be uh, your data should be such that it will it will help you uh, doing ANOVA. For example, uh, sometimes if you consider continuous factors along with categorical factor at different levels. So, what will happen uh, you may require analysis of covariance or some other kind of model, but it is always better if you can make it simple. So, that may be the simple ANOVA will work there. So, please keep in mind all those features while choosing a design. Now, let us discuss first order model and this model you have seen earlier and here what happened we say that we want to adopt adopt orthogonal design. Now, I have given you x matrix which is basically design matrix and we have shown you earlier that if you uh, in the with coded variable that if you multiple if you take the dot product of two of column of the design matrix including the factors of interest you will find out that uh, dot product is 0 which means that orthogonality is uh, obtained. So, now you can you can find out you uh, by computing the x transpose x if you if you your design matrix is x then x transpose x uh, when you compute if the design is orthogonal then what will happen the off diagonal elements of x transpose x become 0. So, for orthogonality for orthogonality x transpose x or we are defining like this x transpose x matrix contain 0 of diagonal elements valued of diagonal elements. So, for first order model to the power k factorial or to the power k minus p fractional factorial design is sufficient. The reason is you are what you require in first order model you require that the main effect should not be aliased with other main effects because your model is first order only main effects you have considered. So, to the power k factorial or to the power k minus p fractional factorial will work there like the factorial design with center points this is a very good design that means this one is 2 to the power 2 design with center point and there is no replication at the center point at the factorial points 
and another design that is also used in first order is known as simplex. We will not discuss this, but the simplex by definition is a regularly sided figure with k plus 1 vertices in k dimensions. So, we will come to the second order response surface designs. I have explained the first order response surface in last two class. So, I told you that when you achieve the using first order response surface model, you, you achieve the point of optimum. So, you, if you start from here and you ultimately your direction will be given by the first order model and then, then what happen your that is experimental runs here you start running. So, the experiment and you get the y result and ultimately this is the zone where you require second order model because first order will not be fit here and to understand that whether optimality is reached or not. So, that means, the in the second order uh, we require second order model here and second order model ultimately uh, has more number of parameters and such uh, design like this to the power 2 uh, k uh, with center point or to the power k factorial to the power k minus p factorial factorial will not be able to provide sufficient data so that the parameters of a second order model can be estimated all the parameters second order model can be estimated. So, you require more information you require special kind of uh, design and those design are discussed here. Now, see we are saying that central composite design and box Behnken design this one is central composite design. What is central composite design? So, central composite design has three three kind types of um, three types of points I can say. What is this? One is factorial points which are the corner of this rectangle, axial point and the uh, center point and axial points. Please understand this with reference to 2 to the power 2 design k equal to 2 with reference to 2 to the power 2 case here you have 4 factorial points, 1 center point and 4 axial points and the distance from um, center point to any of the axial point is alpha. So, you require to find out the value of alpha that is important. This axial point is also known as star point. If it is if it is 3 factor case 3 factor case then you will be getting the cube and there will be 8 factorial points 1 center points and obviously, how many faces are there 1 2 1, one 2 3 4 5 6. So, accordingly uh, the axial points will also will be chosen axial point will be chosen along the three dimensions both side and it will be alpha distance apart from the center point plus minus alpha distance separate from the center along there are when there are two factors two axis. So, 2 into 2 4 axial points 3 factor 3 axis 3 into 3 into 2 6 axial points. Now, issue is that what will be the alpha? Alpha will is this is chosen uh, and occur and depending on the value of alpha the design central composite design also classified as spherical central composite design when alpha equal to k to the power half rotatable central composite design when alpha equal to n f to the power 1 by 4 where n f is basically the number of factorial runs and face centered CCD when alpha equal to 1 that means that means the axial points are all on the middle of the side uh, side of the polygon. Okay. So, CCD have three kinds of that is points 
where the or other other way I can say settings where the experiments need to be conducted. One is factorial points, another one is central point, another one is axial and star points. Depending on the k value of number of factors, the number of runs as will be chosen. Depending on the on the alpha value chosen, it can be spherical CCD, it can be rotatable CCD, it can be phase center CCD. Now, let us understand what is the um, concept of rotatability. Rotatability an experimental design is said to be rotatable if the variance of the predicted response at any point is a function of the distance from the center point. For example, you consider this figure here temperature and time and is plotted along x and y and along z the uh, response is uh, variance part is response uh, part is plotted. Now, what happened what is the center point what is the center point here you have already seen. So, now you take any distance any distance from the center point and then you measure what will happen you measure the variability uh, of the predicted response at a point at all those points which are equidistant from the center then the variance will be same that is the rotatable one. If from through con uh, the contour plot you can understand that if suppose this is the center point and then this is what is the uh, distance. So, you see that the vary the what happened the um, variance part along this contour line these are basically same ok. So, they are same distance separate this is one. Now, how do you compute the variance? Variance of predicted response at any point is sigma square x transpose x transpose x inverse x. This is what we have discussed earlier and in regression time also we have discussed this. This variance is the same at all points that are at the same distance from the design center. Okay. So, now this is one example of CCD. So, you see that this is a 2 to the power 2 factorial points. So, 4 factorial points that say minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 like this and then there are uh, center point is 85 and 175 5 runs at center points and then then there are 4 axial points runs are there. So, if you conduct experiments for, um, uh, based on uh, all those experimental settings either uh, through that means uh, if you you can very easily understand from this coded variable and this can be this must come from the natural variable and you conduct the experiments accordingly and you will get the y data that is the response data and this response data can be used use uh, actually this this design along with response data can be will be used to feed the second order response surface ok. Now, here is a comparison for example, whether should we go for 3 to the power k design or C C D 3 to the power k means every factor at uh, 3 levels. For example, what you are doing here if you see that go along any 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 di any dimension suppose x 1 what are the design points 1 2 3 here also 1 2 3 in addition here these two are there this point this point is there. So, what we are saying that instead of this if we say x 1 at 3 levels and x 2 at 3 levels then because then we will get this design 3 to the power k design. Now, here what we are comparing we are comparing that number of experimental runs when k equal to 2 to k equal to 5 if you go for C C D and if you go for 3 to the power k design what is the difference. So, from number of runs point of view if your number of factor is 2 then C C D requires 13 runs if your central point run is 5 in number whereas, 3 to the power 3 k design requires 9 runs. But, when you go for k equal to 3 4 5 
immediately you see that the re reverse picture the number of runs required for CCD is much less than the number of runs required for 3 per k design. So, what we can say here from this that the as in order to fit the second order surface CCD is an efficient and better one compared to this provided the purpose uh, for which the model is built is served means you will get the enough information on the on the on the entire design space and that is what is possible also using CCD. Now, another one important one is if you choose alpha equal to uh, that 2 to the power half then actually uh, k to the power half then with spherical design when k equal to 2 and k equal to 3 k equal to 4 the values are given and if you say no at start at, uh, we want the rotatable one rotatable one means the variance at the dist of predicted uh, response at a distance uh, from uh, equidistance from center point will be equal so then if you compare this what you are getting the alpha value they are more or less same similar so that means a rotatable design and a spherical design vehicle design is a rotatable one and other rotatable one is spherical one that sense uh, with little and uh, little marginal uh, difference it is almost equal at least up to k equal to 5 that is what is given in this slide. So, fine, but what will happen if you uh, if you require 3 to the uh, 3 level factorial design 3 level factorial design we have seen that if I go for 3 level factorial design instead of 2, 2 level factorial design and if I employ CCD and if the purpose is served then what happened we, we are we are preparing CCD um, CCD we for 2 level factorial design, but, but the situation, situation is such that 2 level will not give you the required information you require to go 3 level. So, under such situation what happened your number of experiments will be large. So, how can you make it efficient from number of experiment point of view and also at the same time you will get the required information. So, that the purpose for which the data is collected will be served. So, one such design is uh, given one such approach is given by box Benken and the designs adopted based on box Benken approach are known as box Benken design or BBD. The historical perspective of box Benken design is that box Benken uh, designs are three level factorial design developed in 1960. Actually, these are formed by combining 2 to the power co k factorials with incomplete block designs. So, that means, you, you, you do 2 to the power k factorial design and then do another one and finally, you combine uh, in a, uh, that means, in the sequence you can combine them. in a spherical design with all points lying on the sphere uh, it is a, a spherical design and with all points lying on the sphere of radius 2 to the power half does not contain any points at the vertices of the cube. So, know that vertices means we have seen in factorial experiment that in the cube the vertices there are there these are the settings. So, but here what happened does not contain any point on the vertices of the cube. So, this is not correct. So, then used to estimate second degree polynomial obviously, the second order response surface can be fit. No general rules for defining samples. So, tables are provided by the authors that means, the sample size and other things uh, so, it is a, a, a group of tables are provided by Box and Benken as a starting point. So, we can we can use those tables for um, for experiments. Here one example for Box Benken. So, we have three labels. So, x 1, x 2, x 3, three variables. So, you see that ultimately this is what is the design. Uh, how you are doing it? 
you are you are considering you see that there are three factors x1 x2 and x3 and and you are you are basically at a, at a time you are basically choosing the 2 to the power 2 factorial design for a run for example run 1 x1 at minus 1 x2 at minus 1 and x3 at 0 so this is run 1 run 2 so that means first what you do you you find out 2 to the power 2 factorial design for the first two variables and the say third one you put you keep and uh, put it 0 means it is at the center point. So, then you go for the second two variables and the third one will be at 0 level and in this manner you go. So, if you proceed the in this manner what happened there are three variables x 1 x 2 x 3 and first you consider x 1 and x 2 and you know that 2 to the power 2 means 4 factorial runs. So, that means you have 4 runs uh, for um, first combination x 1 and x 2 where x 3 will be 0. Second combination x 1 and x 3 x 2 will be 0 that is another 4 and third combination x 2 x 3 when x 1 is at 0 level that is another combination another, another 4. So, all together that means you require 12, uh, 12 experiments to be conducted in this manner. In addition what happened in addition what happened you require uh, experiment at the center point. Okay. So, that means minus 1 low and plus 1 high, but 0 is basically the middle value the central point value. So, first 12 in this case for k equal to 3 first 12 experiments are done uh, done by considering 2 to the power 2 factorial design for for 3 combinations x 1 x 2 x 1 x 3 and x 2 x 3 and the last here last 3 experiments are conducted uh, conduct uh, will be conducted uh, using the center point. So, so what I mean to say here you require here 15 experimental runs. Suppose, if you say no I do not conduct uh, 3 experimental runs at the center point only 1 you want to conduct then at least 13 you require. But at the same it is customary that at the central point you consider more number of runs uh, because this will give you this will uh, this will allow you to estimate error independently and your uh, your tests other things will become uh, more robust and at the same time what happened the center point is the point which is the most familiar to the operators. So, using this this analogy what happened the 3 factor tables, 4 factor tables, 5 factor tables are provided by the author. Here you see that 3 factor tables what I have explained plus minus 1 plus minus 1 minus this is the first one is the combination for 2 to the power 2 factorial design for x 1 x 2 and x 3 will be at 0 that means 4 observations is runs required. Similarly, second one third one 4 into 3 12, 12 plus 1 13 minimum, but at this level we require more maybe 3 to 5. Then in case of 4 factors what happened you see what you have done first any 2 to the power 2 here 2 to the power 2 then here 2 to the power 2. So, that means 2 to the power 2 combinations you make. So, how many you uh, out of 4 uh, factors you require 2 factors at the factorial uh, case. So, that means you have how many such combination 4 c 2 combination that means factorial 4 by factorial 2 and factorial 2. So, that means 4 into 3 by 2 uh, 6 6 such combinations will be there. Okay. So, here 1 uh, this will give you 4 this will give you 4 4 8 8 8 24 and then again center points are there. So, if you go for 5 factors accordingly you see that 2 2 combination 2 to the power 2 combination you use and find out all the design uh, settings means the point the combination for the different factors where you will conduct the experiment. Okay. So, here we are giving you uh, some some comparative study in terms of number of runs. When uh, number of factor when it varies that box Menken versus central composite how the number of runs varies. 
So box bin can started from fact num three or more factors. So if it is three box bin can requires fifteen runs. Central composite design require twenty, including six center points. Run. Twenty. Okay. Then when number of factors is four, box bin can twenty seven. Central composite thirty. Number of factors is five. This is forty six. Then thirty three fractional factorial or fifty two runs for full factorial, and fifty four. Then here central composite also fifty four with fractional factorial, but ninety one with full factorial. So what is happening here then? So if the number of factors uh, when it is increases, so if you go for three to the power box bin can is three level design and central composite design is uh, two to the power k level design. And with center and axial points, here the number of runs are required more when you go for full factorials. But uh, box bin can design matches with the fractional part, or it is um, giving the giving the efficient uh, results. So, but if you go by three to the power six k design here, so three to the power six it's a huge huge number of runs experiments required. But using box bin can this is. Much less. It is fifty-four only. So with this, I conclude that that in order to estimate the second order regression model or response surface, you require a different kind of design, and that designs which are most popular one are CCD when it is. It is to the power k fact level case. To the power k means each factors are two levels, and another one is box Menken design when it is three to the power k type of case. In this, in the first case, there will be spherical CCD. Spherical CCD. There is your rotatable one. There is face centered CCD. So. CCD requires three kinds of observations: one at factorial points, another set at uh, axial points, and another set at central points. And uh, and uh, it has very useful property and heavily used in fitting uh, in doing experiments for fitting second order response surface. Box based Menken design. Employs the concept concept of two to the power k, but it is basically a three to the power k design where two two factors at a time consider at the factorial uh, factorial points and uh, and the other factors will keep at the uh, at the at their center or level and all the combinations are used and that will that will give you uh, efficient one um, compared to three to the power k full factorial design okay so next class we will discuss the second order model uh, second order model means second order response surface model so hope you have understood the ccd fully and in in, in next class i will i will use the ccd uh, in experimentation and the results through ccd whatever we will get that will be analyzed and that will be used for fitting the second order response surface thank you very much